Hello to you and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Eric and I love to teach and present information in the simplest forms to help you understand. In this video, we will learn all about alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Now, if you learned something from this video, all I ask is for you to hit the like button to show support. By definition, AWS refers to symptoms that occur when patients stop drinking or significantly reduce the alcohol intake after long-term dependence. These symptoms can range from mild to severe life-threatening symptoms so it is imperative to recognize them and manage them appropriately. In order to understand why patients present with these symptoms that we will discuss later, we need to review the mechanism behind all of this. So have you ever heard of depressants or downers and stimulants or uppers? Think of these terms as a way of describing the effects that certain substances have on the body. If a substance has a depressant effect on the body, this will lead to decreased stimulation and arousal. So depressants, in other words, will decrease the blood pressure, your heart rate, energy, causing you to be calm, relaxed, and possibly drowsy. Stimulants are the opposite. They speed up the communication between the CNS and parts of the body, and they lead to increased stimulation and arousal. So stimulants will increase your blood pressure, your heart rate, energy, causing you to be restless and also experience jitters. In order for a substance to cause a depressant effect, they usually work on GABA. GABA stands for gamma immunobutyric acid. So GABA is a chemical messenger aka a neurotransmitter. When GABA binds to its receptor, the message it releases is an inhibitory message. This message will slow down how fast the cells send signals leading to depressant effects. In order for a substance to cause a stimulant effect, they usually work on glutamate. Glutamate is also a neurotransmitter. When it binds to glutamate receptors, it leads to excitatory messages being released leading to more stimulation. So alcohol is a central nervous system depressant that not only increases the activity of GABA, but it inhibits the effects of glutamate. With chronic exposure, the body becomes reliant on the alcohol. So when the alcohol is stopped, the central nervous system becomes overexcited as the inhibition is taken away. So then the body gets an excitatory overload, which results in the symptoms of withdrawal. Mild signs and symptoms can arise within six hours of alcohol cessation. It includes elevated blood pressure, insomnia, having tremors, anxiety, GI upsets, headaches, and palpitations. Moderate symptoms include hallucinations and alcohol withdrawal seizures that can occur 12 to 24 hours after cessation of alcohol. About 50% of patients who had a withdrawal seizure will progress to the most severe form of alcohol withdrawal, delirium tremens. These patients present with significant autonomic dysfunction and vital sign abnormalities. It includes hallucinations, tachycardia, hypertension, hyperthermia, agitation, and diaphoresis. Symptoms of delirium tremens can last up to seven days after alcohol cessation and may last even longer. So recognizing the patient's presentation and obtaining a thorough history is necessary for correct diagnosis. Laboratory studies, including complete blood counts and comprehensive metabolic panels, may be drawn but will likely be non-diagnostic. Many chronic alcoholics will have baseline ketoacidosis due to their poor nutritional status and labs may show acidemia. Once the diagnosis is made, we also need to know the level of severity of the symptoms since this impacts treatment approach. This is achieved with the Clinical Institute for Withdrawal Assessment for Alcohol Revised Scale, CWA ar This is a synopsis of how it looks, but the actual one has different scores within each symptom to describe its severity. I will include a link below for you to see the full version. Once we confirm patient's severity for the AWS, we can then begin management. These patients are agitated already, so you want to make sure the patient is kept calm in a controlled environment. Patients with mild to moderate symptoms should receive supportive therapy in the form of intravenous rehydration and correction of electrolyte abnormalities. Alcoholics are at risk of a condition called Wernicke's Korsakoff syndrome, which is characterized by brain damage due to deficiency in thymine, a vitamin that is poorly absorbed from the guts in alcoholics. To mitigate this, we give patients something known as a banana bag. Here is a picture to show you what it looks like 
and what it contains. Of course, the yellow color is how it got its name, which is due to the thymine and multivitamin. Patients with severe symptoms are managed with long-term benzos, and this includes diazepam, lorazepam, chlordiazepoxide, and oxazepam. The reason why benzos work for these patients is because it potentiates the effects of GABA. This will increase GABA activity and neutralize the overly agitated and stimulated CNS. I have a video on benzos discussing its mechanism, side effects, indication, etc. Link right above. And that will be all, folks. Very straightforward. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, please hit the like button. It takes just one second. Leave a comment if you have questions or if you want to show your support. And subscribe for more. Also, follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.